kind of stop and appreciate, whereas before it would be yelling and maybe shooting a gun or whatever, yeah. but now it's like, uh, you know what, we better take care of these people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they have a certain element that, that we need, you know. I think this time of the year, normally we see things pretty well dried up. Acre Pond generally was, by this time of year, would be dry. Be, be dry. Yeah, Just and it's, it's full. Some of the uh, backcountry roads still have water running down them. Uh, the seeps are, are still flowing. Uh, we ran into one yesterday that was not only flowing, it was, it was actually spurting water. And uh, you know, we haven't seen anything like that for, well, 20 some odd years. Yeah. <laughs> but the water is clear, the spring that comes out of that particular camp there, it's just uh, crystal clear. Cold and, and cold. Cold and drinkable, just yeah. great. The other thing we noticed, uh, particularly yesterday, I noticed that uh, there were a lot of birds. Generally, we don't see that many birds, small birds, large birds flying. The interesting thing is they have water now, whereas this time of year, uh, when the water source dries up, they usually leave the area. Yeah. A lot of these creeks that Fred and I either walk over or ride over, uh, even on the valley floor here and then up a little bit higher, are still running. And that, that that's kind of odd for us. In the 25 years that I've been here, this time of year it would be really, really rare to see water even trickling in some of these places. Yeah, usually it's just potholed up in, yeah. in maybe a, a spot where it's coming right out of the ground and, and the creek down below would be completely dry. This year the creek's running right on down all the way through. Uh, especially that creek we were at yesterday, that, that thing yeah. dries yeah. up right off the bat and it's been yeah. watered all summer long. And it's nice to see, see the water uh, staying for longer periods of time. After the medicine wheel, Blue Thunder explained to me that the work had really just begun and that there was a lot of work that he would like to do around the entire valley that would really bring this grid together. And that's how we got him back out here this year. Here's the Big Bear Medicine Hall. Here's Big Bear Lake. Here's those eight points on the outside. The area from Big Bear Lake where we did the ceremony goes out 120 miles out. Now these points right here, these are four points vibrating together with sound and us in the middle. So there's the Big Bear people who are vibrating with the drums and singing songs and asking for prayers or sending circles out. The drum, every time you hit the drum, your thoughts went out. Electrical energy, vibrating, healing all the negative things that happened on the earth, fixing it. Those out here, we're doing the same, sending it in. We were sending it out. They're sending it in. We're sending it out. It's going up. Okay, here's all eight of them vibrating together. Look at all these energy lines reconnecting. This is the flower of life, bringing the water. Water went way out, went all the way to Las Vegas. This is how the water works, the vibration, the springs and everything. Right now there's been many springs that has opened in Big Bear. A lot of you know about this. Why have they opened? Because of this. I also predicted last year that when the snow came, I predicted that there'd be no snow this year. And I mentioned also why because the vibration and the sound that's going on in this valley will disconnect all the work that we did. Most of it, I shouldn't say all of it, three-fourths of it. But the springs are still trying to work. Now what I've been asked to do was to help bring more water and snow here. So I've been here for almost two months working and studying the earth again, looking at these peaks on the top of Big Bear to help energize the earth again. Okay, this is what we're doing right now, uh, reharmonizing the peaks around Big Bear. Tip Top, Onyx, Sugar Loaf, Grand View, Crafts, John Hill Flats, Hawes, South Peak, and Silver Peak, and Keller. And then the last one that we'll be doing will be in the center. So we're going up here, a lot of the devastation of the mining and development around this area has disconnected the energy here for the last 100 years, almost 200 years. And when they disconnect the electrical energy, well, we have is this for the plunger now. More, no more water because there's no snow. So what I'm doing is using crystals and these hold high energy, white light. So when I vibrate the drum and the energy shoots in here and charges the mountain and stores the energy back in there and prepares those peaks. That's what I'm doing on all those peaks. This is old age, old wisdom. So now it's coming back to many of us how to energize the earth and the world with these sacred stones. These lodestones are genetic magnets that hold the, the earth together. So I use these to repair the earth and the grids with these crystals. I'm a crystal. 
this is a crystal, the water is a crystal, the clouds are, is a crystal, the oxygen. So we have been made to download, to manifest our thoughts on earth, to make what we need, all through the crystalline grid. This is how things work. So we're getting ready to harmonize for the water and the snow that in the springs for the next season. Healing Mother Nature, for Mother Nature to heal, to sustain life here, which is the grass, the trees, the rocks, the animals. You know, all of us are working together now to bring clarity and wisdom of what happened to the earth. The development on this mountain is causing this electrical energy to short circuit from the mountain. It's turning it into a dead zone. And electrical energy is a conductor to the water, to the springs, and to the rain. The trees hold three and four hundred gallons of water. How much gallons of water do we hold in our blood? It's the same and similar. That tree came here to give us oxygen, and its roots go into the earth. And the tree gathers electrical energy from the sunlight and the wind and generates electrical energy into the earth. And that's the importance of the trees. So if we cut the trees down, the light leaks out of the trunk. And then the energy is leaking out of the earth. Well, it's easy to fix, and that's with our hands. It has electrical energy. Stick it on the end, ask it to heal and seal. The nerve endings, it's leaking the light, and then it seals and stops. And then you seal the light. Now the tree turns healthy. So looking back into history, many people died down here in this flat. The Chinese, the indigenous nations, Mexicans, whites, blacks, and the yellow nations. Their spirits are still trapped in the soil. The earth images all the sound like a video tape recorder. And it's being replayed over and over. So you see the battle still going on. Their spirit is there. Electrical magnetic energy, the vibration of what they were doing when they died. And they were never released with prayers and great thoughts. And so this is the energy that needs to be cleared from this valley, that is negative energy, and that's what we came here to heal. We're told in our tribal nations, when we cook food, not to put our thoughts of anger and hatred on the food. As you're stirring the pot and cooking the food, your thoughts are bombarding the food, whether you know it or not. So you're mad and you're stirring that, thinking maybe ugly things, maybe, I wish that person would get in a car wreck and die, or I hate that person, or whatever it may be of the emotion. So that thought goes into the food, vegetables, meat, whatever it is, because in that pot is water. The meat is water. The vegetables is water. The water is a great conductor of electrical energy, so our thoughts is electrical energy, and we shoot them out like rays. When we eat the food, the people become sick, stomach aches, illnesses and sicknesses can happen, anger and hatred, whatever the thoughts were that was put in the food. Now if someone went there and put great thoughts on a food and blessed it, cleared it, then it's full of white light and electrical magnetic energy. We as indigenous knowledgeable people like myself carry this wisdom. So they try to call us medicine men or shamans, but we don't call ourselves that. We call ourselves professors of knowledge of the earth. So what I do is I ask this plant to be blessed by the sun, the creator. This is white sage. So we're given this plant to use. So when I ask the great spirit to bless this, which is the white light, the electrical energy, and my thoughts, I ask it to put the message of peace and love on the earth and it goes into this plant just like water if I put my thoughts on the water and tell it to be love peace and harmony then that's what it is so my thoughts are on this and I offer this to the great spirit that nothing but love peace and harmony and giving thanks and gratitude to the earth that's why I give this offering and I spread it on the earth because I'm making white light you may not see it but some people can see and they see there's white light the sprinkling is like stardust on the earth. Why is that? Because I charged it and put white light on it. How did I do that? Because I'm in peace and I have white light that went on here. And now it's there. So that sealed it. Now I can dig a hole and it won't leak the light. So what we're going to do is reset the earth because of the mining and development and sound and vibration today. So my vibration goes into these crystals. I have a high charge of energy, but they've already been charged by the sun for I don't know how many days of laying in the sun, so they gather light, just white light. And I come and put my thoughts in them, so I ask them to bring harmony to the earth to help release the spirits that are locked in the earth in bondage. So we're going to release many things today. How to do this, how to do that. That's what everybody's fighting over, how to do this, how to do that. You're wrong. Well, there's no wrong way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. There's only just get it done and it is. It's all 
There's a lot of vibration and you're going to feel it going off. And it's vibrating. So the prayers are on that. All these piles of stones that were around here, it has prayers on them. I put my prayers on here. I put it in the stone and I put my thoughts here and my prayers are in the stone because this holds memory. It holds energies. My thoughts are in this. If a thousand people come put their prayers right here, then that thing magnifies with a bunch of white light and energizes out into the land. And what it's energizing is those thoughts. So that's what will manifest in the area. That's the importance of the piles of those prayer stones that are left around the canyons and the peaks and the piles. That's what the tribes are doing. When the earth went out of balance, they went up there and fixed it. Not with greed, ego, anger, or hatred, but only peace and love because they knew if they had those kinds of thoughts, there would be wars and fighting. So they only wanted purity, so they only put great thoughts because all this stone is crystal. This is crystal. So this held all of our prayers and our thoughts today. So this whole place is vibrating with our thoughts and our prayers now to enhance what we need to bring forth peace and love and, and freedom in the valley. We were coming down off of John Bull Flats after we had gone to the top of John Bull Mountain and we'd had our medicine wheel ceremony. The whole area that was holes in the ground, maybe 30 feet in diameter and 10 or 15 feet deep where these, these guys just came along and just poked holes in the ground and got down to the bedrock and, and were panning for gold. It was a mining community and these holes in the ground where they were living must have been a terrible way of making a living, thinking that you're going to strike it rich. It was so full of, of uh, negativity, you could feel it. It was just, it was just a, a blighted area. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Then he actually started feeling bad and w was sick for a couple of days after we'd went through there. We've ridden through there every summer for the last 20 summers, and I never even thought of it. Uh, it we just ride through there, and it's just... So, but being with Benny and being around him and now becoming more aware of the earth and our surroundings. I would concur with Friend with regard to being sensitive to some of these areas. You can actually feel the energy. When you pay attention, you can feel the energy. And when we ride through certain places, Fred and I will talk about that. Did you feel that? Did you see that? Uh, what's the sense here? And yeah. we kind of talk a little we bit see. about it. Some of our friends think we're a little bit crazy, but that's okay. While approaching this point, we found this tree up there that has a lightning strike. The lightning comes in from the thunder beings, and whichever color of the lightning comes in shows the importance of what needs to go back into the earth. It strikes pink, sending love into the earth. If it's blue, it's sending wisdom. If it's green, it's bringing new life. So there's 13 colors of lightning. Thunderbirds, thunder beings we call them. This is the energy of the colors of the rainbows. It's like a tuning fork shaped like a Y at the top. That holds vibration. It was used to restore uh, some energy that was needed here. So the tree sacrificed itself. You can see where the lightning went down the side of the tree. The lightning restores electrical magnetic energy into the earth. That restores the earth and puts it into balance. It resets the heartbeat and also resets the electrical magnetic vibration. I wanted to show the importance of these stones. You know, these stones hold electrical energy because they're made of crystal. So you might be able to see the reflection in this rock. So when the electrical lightning and the charge hits the earth here, it recharges everything to put the charge back in. And that's why it's so important. This is a very sacred site. It needs to be protected so much because these are what holds the earth together. If these are disconnected from the earth, it causes droughts, tornadoes, hurricanes tsunamis, etc. across the earth. All of nature that's causing the havoc now is cleansing the earth. The charges of nature coming is fixing earth. And for us, when we do our ceremonies, we can recharge the earth to begin to soften the blow of nature that's coming. Now it's time for us to go back to work and love Mother Earth. So these stones listen with consciousness, like the earth, the wind, and the fire. All has consciousness. This rock has negative energy, so today when we do the ceremony, we change that thought form from the bicyclers being up here who may have partied, angered, fought, argued, took the land out of harmony with their thoughts. Who knows what took place here for 500 years? Whatever took place here, we're going to clear all that from here today with our sound, our thoughts, and our vibration with the drums of doing this crystal ceremony. Have an open mind and an open heart to understand how these crystals work, and we use them in the past to heal the earth. Many blew up the earth. In times of Atlantis by using these crystals. Many of our people remember, and that's why we're told not to use these crystals if we don't know what we're doing. But I've had dreams and visions about these crystals and how to use them. The Cherokees have a lot of messages about crystals, so they still work with crystals a lot. So do the Navajos, so do many other cultures. Use them 
be discreet about using these crystals and know what's going on before you, anyone attempts to do this.